Good morning. Welcome back to Breakfast Television. Now we're looking at a drive that's not too bad within the city as of right now, but our first problem of the day, of the day rather, on the westbound 401 ramp to Brock Road. We have a right lane block because of a collision. Emergency crews are currently on the scene. It doesn't seem to be adding to delays on the actual ramp. However, leading up to that ramp on the westbound 401, it is quite the slow drive. And then you'll find delays through Scarborough on the westbound 401 from Nielsen to McCowan in the Express and through Kennedy in the Collectors. On the flip side, eastbound 401, busy approaching Mavis to about here Ontario. We're also looking at delays Islington to about Weston, both in the Express and Collectors, which is what you're looking at here. And then a slow, or rather actually decent drive uh, heading towards and through North York right now, uh, both in the Express and Collectors. Seabon Denture Adhesive Seals provide stronger all-day hold thanks to their unique gradual release technology. Seabon Wildly Adhesive. That's a look at your roads. Frankie, I know we've been talking about up north. The driving conditions may not be the best. Yeah, but if you look at the window this morning here in Toronto, you say it looks pretty good out there. But be warned. Special weather statement by Environment Canada this afternoon. We could see some of that snow squall activity push its way into Toronto. Also, the risk just outside of the city of blowing snow with winds continuing out of the west 30 to 50 and that equals some bad roads. What Steph was talking about is what's going on just north of the city this morning. That's coming off Lake Huron, pushing its way over towards areas like Alliston. Uh, we're seeing that into New Tech this morning, into Innisfil, as well as into Bradford, northern portions of the York region, touching its way through to Georgina, and then it moves its way east. And this could push its way down into Oshawa at any time. So just be aware, north of the city, along the 400, the 404, anywhere north of that King Road, you can see some snow-covered areas and also some whiteout conditions, especially when you're seeing that west. That means if you're driving north and south, that crosswind is what's creating that blowing snow and whiteout conditions. Minus 6 into Markham right now, minus 6 at Pearson. Highs today of minus 3, minus 10 through the overnight. Cold start to your Saturday morning. Flurries through the morning at minus 5. Temperatures rise Sunday. We'll see some sunny breaks. Get into some showers Sunday night into Monday. 7 degrees by Monday. Four, nice looking day into Tuesday, partly cloudy. Six and cloud cover on Wednesday and six degrees as well on Thursday. That's a look at the next seven days. Weather-wise, some school bus cancellations this week. And some is an understatement. We have a number of them, Frankie, so let's get right to them right now. Here is what's going on with your school buses. Buses for Durham Catholic and public boards have been canceled for zones one, two, and three. York Region Catholic and public, your buses are canceled as well. Moving along now to Halton Region, just for Zone 3 for both public and Catholic, buses cancelled, schools open, buses cancelled as well for Caledon and Dufferin County. All buses not running in Simcoe County. And then all buses cancelled in the city of Kawartha Lakes and for the Trillium Lakelands Board. And this just came through as well. All campuses for Georgian College are going to be closed today. So obviously classes will be cancelled, so something to keep in mind. All right, students may have to get up a little earlier or stay a little bit later in class next September as the Toronto District School Board implementing new cost-saving measures. What does it mean? Well, 131 schools will start between 8.15 and 9.15 in the morning, and the end of the day will stagger from a 2.45 to 3.45 end. The changes are being implemented to use fewer buses to transport students, and that's going to mean savings for the board of about $2.5 million. Now, the board says... They know it will affect parents, but they have given this six months now for you to make adjustments. We know that there is going to be a range of reactions to this. We're trying to work with them as best we can to make this as smooth a transition as possible. We're trying to give them as much time, six months notice, so that they can make any necessary arrangements if necessary. And the board also saying it's good for the environment, saying it will reduce their carbon footprint by approximately 2,750 metric tons Per year. Well, what would make a $1 million plane mysteriously burst into flames? The 680 News reporter Carl Hansky has the very latest from this developing story out of Buttonville Airport this morning. You can see a hole in the fence here on the south side of Buttonville Airport and tracks in the snow that lead to that DeSalt Falcon 50 Bizjet that is now destroyed by fire here at Buttonville Airport. Sometime overnight, it appears someone cut a hole in the fence, walked up to that plane, 
and lit it on fire. Police did found a gas can on scene. They're not sure, though, if this is a random act of arson or if the plane or the owner were targeted for reasons unknown. Now, this plane, when new, was worth about $21 million. This one is 40 years old, built in 1980. It's worth around a million bucks, but as you can see from the damage, is now a write-off. Just outside Buttonville Airport, I'm Carl Hansky, 680 News.